Knitters. Welcome to episode 103 of the Knitting with Pearly podcast. I am your host, Devin Ventry. You can find me online at knittingwithpearly.com. I am Knitting McPearly on Instagram. And if you want to email me, I am Devin at knittingmcpearly.com. How cute is this mug? Isn't this so cute? I got it for $4 at TJ Maxx yesterday. It was one of those where I was like, I was done shopping and then I was waiting in line. And you know how you have to wait in line with all that cute stuff? Well, I walked past this and I was like, no, no, it's coming with me. <laughs> it is a thousand degrees here. I have really had just about enough of it. <laughs> I am kind of a purist when it comes to seasons. Like if it's fall, Let's have it be fall. I want it to be cold and it's hot out. I'm not even going out there. <laughs> we have the air conditioning on in the house and I'm not even going out there. It's humid and blech, blech. not good knitting weather at all. Okay, so this week we were, my whole family and I were sitting on the couch and my oldest daughter found this video on her phone of my youngest daughter who is just about to turn eight and in the video, she's two and a half. And I, it's so cute. I've watched it like a thousand times. And I feel like I'm justified in sharing it on the podcast because it has a knitting in it. You will notice that there is a little chubby chirp in there, which is a free knitting pattern by Rebecca Danger, which we're going to talk about in Knitting Fantasies today. And his name is Chirpy. And he apparently did something wrong because he's in timeout. So here's that cute video. Can he, is he allowed to move? No. I see. It's time now. Ah, oh, it's so cute. <laughs> We've all been walking around all week going, sit there, chirpy, sit there, chirpy. He in time out. <laughs> it's so cute. It's especially cute because now she's almost eight and she's still cute, but it's not the same. There, there's um, a quality that two and a half year olds have where they're just so self-forgetful. It's just really, really endearing. Anyway, progress and shop news. My Black Friday sale starts one week from today, Sunday, November 20th. If you want to get a code for 20% off everything in my shop, including the fun new stuff I'm going to share with you today, sign up for my newsletter on my website. If you sign up there, then I will email you all the details and what you need to do to get 20% off. It's just going to be a code. It's not anything big. Um, so also, in addition to... I have free shipping at $200 purchases, which I know is a lot. I know $200 is a lot. But if you wanted to make gifts, if you wanted to give gifts for knitters, if you wanted to buy gifts for yourself that are from your husband to wrap and put under the tree, you could definitely do that then. Um, I really want your business this Black Friday, so I'm, I've got my 20% off that's going to be for a whole week. It's going to run from... Sunday, November 20th at noon, all the way through Cyber Monday, which is a week and a day and a half because I'll, I'll go through midnight on Cyber Monday. So um, I have five new colors. I was originally going to have six new colors because I wanted to have 12, like 12 just felt like a really good number. Um, but as I was, I would dye one at a time, like the first ones just came out of me. Like they were like, these are the colors. But then you start looking at the whole body of colors and saying, what's missing? Like these colors have to work together. They have to go together. You have to be able to, you know, make sweaters out of them and make projects out of them. So I'm at 11 right now and I'm afraid to add that last color. And why? It's my own business. I could add 10 more colors if I want. But I just am like, I have to have everything that I need represented. So I'm going to go through and show you the colors that I added that are new. Uh, this is not totally new. This is Black Forest Cake. The only base that I brought up is St. Petersburg Super Bulky. And on that base, this is a non-super wash. So on this base, this color, you really see all of the nuances. 
in a superwash base, it really is, you look at it and you go, is that black or is that green? Sorry, this is moving around a little bit. My kids get excited about all my little video tools and they walk around with them and then I can't find them. So I end up using whatever I have and sometimes it wobbles. So anyway, this color is super gorgeous. Um, I can put up, you know, as I'm talking, as it is relevant, I will will put up different pictures because um, like I said, I only brought up this one base, but this is a color that I introduced, mm, I don't know, a couple months ago. And I called it Black Forest Cake because I wanted it to be kind of a blackish greenish color. And I couldn't remember the difference between Black Forest Cake and German Chocolate Cake, which I still kind of don't remember. I think German Chocolate Cake has coconut and Black Forest Cake has whipped cream and cherries. Who cares? It's all good. All delicious. So anyway, that is this color, which isn't totally new because you've seen it before. Uh, another color that you have seen before is Trinket. This is a deep tonal. They're all like tonal semi-solids. Uh, and this one is a deep yellow. This is the same color from my Vesper sweater. And I worked that in a Frankfurt fingering, but again, this is the St. Petersburg, super bulky. So that is the color Trinket. They kind of look amazing together. I, I laid out all the colors together and I love them. Like they just, I just love them. They're all my favorites. So then I thought, and all these are ones you haven't seen before. This one looks amazing with Trinket. This one is called Frost. And the inspiration for this color um, is a, I think it's Sherwin-Williams, can't remember. It's one of these palettes that I got from Lowe's that has all these different colors that go together and I love every single color. The white in that palette is the white that I have on my walls all over my house. So this is a color from that palette and I just love it so much. It's so pretty and it goes super well with another new color, Pewter. And I'm going to be talking about these three together because how amazing is that? That's like icing and Christmas and ice skating and icicles. And I don't know why there's so many ice related things that go with this color palette, but they just look amazing. And another new color that looks amazing with this. Hold on. It's got a wonky piece. Is Roxette. How fun is that? Isn't that a great name for a color? It's a deep, deep orange. So pretty, right? Oh, it's just fall and pumpkins and lattes, and it's just pure goodness. So are those all of them? Yeah, those are the five new ones. Pewter, this one's called Pewter, and it is a medium gray. Now you might think that I just whipped this gray up. I did not, I did not just whip this gray up. There are about five skeins of gray downstairs that I'm like, I'm, I was trying out the different recipes to see what I liked. Uh, and it's funny because what I would do is I would dye them all and then I'd say, well, which one do I like the most? And I'd have my picks of my favorites, but then when I put it in with the other colors, I'd be like, nope, that one's out. It doesn't, it doesn't work. So this light-ish, medium-ish gray uh, was the one that I settled on and it's gray. It's just a great gray. I just really like it a lot. So Pewter, Frost, and all these will be available on the shop update on the 20th. Rock Set, now it's gonna get awkward. Trinket and Black Forest Cake. Can I hold them all up, sort of? Yeah, so those are all the new ones. Uh, I'll put up pictures just to show you all of them together because I think Think they look so good together. I'm really excited about them. I've got ideas. I'm like, I need to have a mini skein set that has all the colors. That would be amazing. I need to have a sweater that has all the colors. That would be amazing. Oh my gosh, I have so many ideas. And you know, in the idea phase, it just churns and churns and churns and and you know, they, they kind of, there's like a filter, right? Where like most of the ideas fall down through the filter and a few of them get caught. And then, you know, we run with a few of them, but a lot of them just go down the filter. But anyway, I have a lot of ideas. It's, it's really exciting. And I will have these colors across all of my bases. So if you're interested in them or any combination of them, 
then you can pick those up anytime. You can pick them up. Actually, yeah, the shop update starts next week at 12. They'll be available then at 20% off. So definitely come back for that. And that brings me to, I have a new base. What? <laughs> Don't you remember a few weeks ago that I talked about alpaca and how much I love alpaca, but that I didn't have any alpaca in my shop. So I, I, I have a few websites that I frequent that have different bases on them. And I came across one of my favorite websites. I came across a sport weight, 100% baby alpaca. <laughs> and that is the new base in my shop, which I am calling Athens Alpaca. Here it is uh, in Bougie. Um, I have it dyed up. Gosh, there's all these little sticky outies. I have it dyed up in all the colors, but um, the others are still drying downstairs. So all I brought up was Bougie. When this yarn arrived, I made everyone in my house touch it. I just walked around, even like my 10 year old son, I'm like, touch this, touch this. You have to feel it. He was like, Ooh, that's nice. Like imagine you're in like a bed, a feather bed surrounded by a newborn baby lamb and like a little fluffy chick and a baby rabbit. And there's little cute babies, chubby ones crawling all around. That's all wrapped up in this yarn. <laughs> it is so soft. So this is the only yarn base that is not named after the weight. All of my other bases, I have used alliteration with a mostly European, but from other places too, uh, city that I haven't been to, but would love to go to. And this one though, I went with the fiber content because it is 100% baby alpaca. Did I mention that it's 100% baby alpaca? <laughs> It's so amazing. And I will have this in every single one of my colors available at the shop update all next week. It's coming, people. It's coming. This is going to be my next sweater. I And it is a sport weight. Did I say it was a sport weight? I, I, I kind of went back and forth. I'm like, well, should I name it something for sport weight or should I go with alpaca? And this is the Athens alpaca. And I feel like that's just what it is. It's just buttery and squishy and just amazing. But yeah, this is my next design right here. I'm gonna be using this yarn because I just wanna wrap myself in it. I want like one of those big bathtubs filled with yarn that I can just snuggle down in. <laughs> oh gosh, so I have skeined so much yarn in the past week that I actually have a blister and it popped open and I started rubbing my hand balm on it. Now this hand balm, this is my own, you can see it's like totally beat up. This is what happens to hand balm in my house. Okay, I don't even know what, I don't even know what has happened to this. But I'm gonna show you how much I use this hand balm. It is a lot. And I use it like, you know the guy in my big fat Greek wedding who um, puts everything in, like any ailment he has, he uses Windex. And there's like a, a scene of him like, with his elbow in Windex at the dinner table. I'm like that with this hand balm. I'm, I'm like rubbing the hand balm on the blister and I've got places where the dog scratched me and it's like magic. It's like magic balm. It's not, it's not really magic, but it's like magic. You rub it on there, like this blister broke open. Sorry, that's gross, I know. And it hurt and so I got the balm and I rubbed it in there and I was like, oh, that feels better. And it's just, it's just got a lot of good stuff in it. It's got like, shea butter, coconut oil, it's got olive oil, it's got um, lanolin. It's just amazing. It's got so many amazing things in it. And it just heals your skin and your boo-boos. And if you get a blister from skeining, then you need the balm. So that balm will be in the shop update. I think there's some in the shop now that um, is in the smaller containers. Do I have one here? No. That I showed last time but I will have more of the two ounce containers in the shop update. So that is exciting. Another fun thing that's gonna be in the shop update is a hat kit. What? I totally do stuff that I don't tell you guys about. <laughs> so 
I was thinking about my St. Petersburg super bulky and how much I wanted to knit with it. And I thought, well, what am I gonna make? Like, what am I gonna make with this yarn? I don't know, it's super bulky. So I thought, how about some hats? So I knit up these hats. This is the allotrope hat. And my daughter, my oldest daughter is studying chemistry this year. And she's like, mom, do you even know what an allotrope is? And I was like, yeah, this hat has diamonds on it. And when I used thesaurus.com to search for a synonym for diamond, it said allotrope. <laughs> so like, so an allotrope is like the different forms that an element can take, like diamonds and coal and graphite are all allotropes of carbon, um, which I learned after I looked it up because I thought that was such a great word and I wanted to use it to name my hat. Isn't it so cute? I love this hat. So I'm gonna have kits in the shop to make these hats. It makes, each kit makes two hats and one big fluffy pom-pom. So one of them will have to remain pom-pom less. Kind of looks good with the yellow side. Uh, or you could use a different pom-pom, like a, a, a faux fur pom-pom or something like that. Aren't they just so, so cute? So those kits will be in the shop for the update. Let me just tell you that this hat, one hat, takes an hour to knit. I timed myself. And it, one of these hats, this one in particular, I knit in an hour and a half. And the only reason it took me an hour and a half is because I was multitasking. I was like sitting in the middle of my house. It was the evening with my whole family around. You know how that goes. I mean, you're never allowed to just focus on one thing, which is fine because this is a lot of mindless knitting. Um, but it is so, so fun. You use a size 15 circular needle, a US 15, which is a 10 millimeter needle. Use that as a circular and then DPNs at the top. And it is just so much fun. And it's so trendy and just adorable. These hats would make amazing Christmas gifts. The kit is going to be affordable because what you're gonna get with the kit, I haven't fully fleshed it out yet because I have until next week. But definitely, you're going to get three skeins of yarn. Um, but I'm not going to charge you the price of three skeins of yarn because that's too much money for two hats. I want you to knit these hats. I want you to make them because they are super fast. They are wonderful gifts. Anyone would be happy to have one, especially a young, cool, hip person. My uh, middle daughter wants me to make two of them for uh, two of her teachers. And I'm like, I can totally commit to two hours of knitting. That's totally fine, because that's an evening, right? Uh, I'm gonna have these in lots of combinations. Like I said, all of my yarn goes together. So you can, you know, put these together in whatever cool way you want to. It's gonna be really, really great. Uh, the last thing I wanted to tell you about are these beautiful leather scissor sleeves from Jennifer Yun. I have the yellow in the shop right now. These are amazing. Everything, Jen Yun does is beautiful. She's just one of those people who everything she does is amazing. Um, this is the one in yellow that, like I said, she has her little uh, embossed JY on the back. The stitching is amazing. And I have other ones that I ordered from her years ago that are still doing really well. Like they still look amazing. They're leather, she uses really high quality leather. Um, when you buy this, it does come with the scissors. You don't need to buy them separately. I've had a few people ask me about that. Like, is that separate or no, they come together. So for the holiday season, I also have this amazing green and this is gonna be part of the shop update. They kind of look great together. But I love the stitching color and it's just so beautiful. She just does such a good job. She actually designed the shape of this, the scissor sleeve to go with the Devon scissors. See how it has that kind of arch at the top? She designed it specifically to go with those scissors. So anyway, that is really, really fun. Is that all I wanted to tell you about? I think so. Okay, topic of the week. I brought this up last time and I knew it was gonna be controversial. Are you really allergic to wool? Like, are you really? <laughs> Is that condescending? Yes, that's super condescending because 
people know if they put something on and it makes them itchy or it makes their eyes water or their nose run or whatever, there are things that can bother us. And the last time we talked, I just touched on it, but today I wanted to go into more detail from the Fleece and Fiber source book. This used to have a really pretty cover, but I took it off because then the book looks prettier in my living room. This is a really amazing book. It has tons of really good information, pictures, talks about all the different breeds and it'll show you like just so many good pictures, maps of where you can find these different breeds of sheep. It's really cool. It's just a really cool book. But there's this whole section on wool allergies and the prickle factor. And I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you. Um, again, this is by Robeson and Acarius, two very, very nice ladies that I have met before. They say in the book, have you ever put on a wool sweater and felt itchy? That happens to all of us sometimes. Although some people are more susceptible to the prickle factor than others. Many people often say they have a wool allergy, but in fact, very few people are truly allergic to wool. Think of it this way. Wool fibers are essentially the same as human hair fibers. How many people do you know who are allergic to hair? More often, a negative reaction is caused by another substance that is coming along with the fiber, possibly the lanolin. Or sometimes there are traces of grasses or seeds in the wool. <clears throat> Brooklyn Tweed, I'm looking at you. Um, or perhaps the chemicals used in processing. Now, in Angora rabbits, this is super interesting. The bunny's saliva also might be an allergen. And that is because that is how the bunnies groom themselves. Just like cats, they lick themselves to be clean. So the fur gets covered in the saliva. Once the saliva has been thoroughly removed through washing, people often find that they're just fine with the Angora. Uh, others may have difficulty from inhaling fine particles which may be more of a problem with commercially processed rather than hand processed fibers. When it comes to lanolin, some breeds produce a very small amount of lanolin, whereas others produce a lot. Lanolin is a bit greasy and it protects the wool and keeps the, ske the sheep's skin soft and supple, which is why it's often used as a natural base in cosmetic creams and lotions, as it is in my hand balm. So if you're allergic to lanolin, the hand balm might not be the best for you. A true lanolin allergy doesn't just cause itching. There is a severe rash, usually on the face, hands, and arms, accompanied by swelling and redness. So if you're allergic to lanolin, you will know it right away. This reaction can occur within a few hours or days of exposure and can last for several days. I used lanolin when I was nursing my babies. Anybody else use it then? That's kind of when I was introduced to lanolin. Most wool from large scale producers is chemically cleaned before spinning, and then it is often treated with chemicals to repel moths and resist fire, which it really doesn't need to because natural fibers, I'm sorry, I keep bumping this plant. <laughs> natural fibers are naturally flame retardant. Uh, and then finally, it might be dyed with other chemicals. The cleaning process includes several steps involving alkaline baths to remove lanolin and acid baths to remove vegetable matter, such as burrs and hay chaff. These chemical baths are carefully balanced to minimize damage to the wool, yet all of these chemicals are harsh and they may pummel the life out of the wool or they may cause true allergic reactions in some people who are more chemically sensitive. So if only a few people have allergies, why do the rest of us sometimes get that itchy feeling? The answer is the prickle factor, which is related to the diameter of the individual fibers used to produce the yarn. They are measured in microns. The thickness of the hair or the, the fiber is measured in microns. So the micron count varies depending on who's looking at it. Anything over 28 microns in diameter is considered prickly by most people, though the official cutoff point is about 30 microns. Uh, larger fibers don't bend easily, 
And when the tiny ends of the individual fibers poke out of the yarn or fabric, they produce a prickling sensation, which totally makes sense. When more than 5% of the fibers in a yarn have a micron count greater than 30, the itchy effect becomes readily noticeable to most people, especially if there's direct contact with sensitive skin, such as your neck or wrists. But some people are just more sensitive and they get prickled by something even finer than that. Now, also, in addition to the diameter of each individual fiber, the way the fiber is spun can make it feel more prickly. Uh, yarns that are spun with all of the fibers lying parallel to each other, which is like a worsted way of spinning the yarn, not worsted like the weight of the yarn, but worsted is another way of describing the way that the yarn is spun. Um, it's kind of, I think of the opposite of a woolen spun. I don't really know if it's actually the opposite, but let me read on. <laughs> Anyway, when the, pair, when the fibers are all laying parallel to each other, that's a worsted style, and that has fewer ends sticking out and is therefore less prickly. Yarns where the fibers lie in a helter-skelter arrangement, such as woolen style, so I guess if you could talk about opposite ways of lying the fibers, that I guess would be what that is, they potentially have fibers right poking out right at the surface, <clears throat> which could feel pricklier. <clears throat> so I guess... When you're looking at a woolen spun yarn, <clears throat> you're going to want fibers that have a lower micron count, like a very, a finer wool should be spun in a woolen spun in order so that when they do stick out, it doesn't prickle you quite as much. Okay, and that's basically what that says there. So that is a very interesting lot of information. And then, I received this email from Julie. Do you guys remember Julie? She was one half of the two sisters who gave their knitting story on my episode 100. Um, hi, Julie and Deb. They were so great. So many of you said they need their own podcast. They are coming to the retreat and I cannot wait to meet them. But Julie sent me this email and I thought this was super, super interesting. She said, a long time ago, when I would wear commercially made wool socks, I would last about 10 minutes before I had to rip them off. Then once her sister, Deb, started knitting her socks out of nicer wool, that was fine. And she was like, I can't make any sense of this. Why is it that some wool is bothering me so much and other wool I'm just fine with? So here's what she said. I went back to our little hometown in September for my 40th class reunion. Over the years, I had heard about a new fiber mill and shop owned by a very nice couple. Of course, upon my arrival, I headed north of town 13 miles until I came upon their house slash ranch slash mill slash shop. That sounds amazing. I want one of those. Truly the cutest place and just the nicest hardworking people. Northwest Colorado is known for being one of the top wool producers in the world. What? Oh my gosh, I have to come there. Lewis and Lorraine Moon of Yampa Valley Fiber Works mill wool from their own flocks as well as from all over the country. I want their wool. Lewis runs the mill portion. Apparently there is a six to nine month wait for their natural processing. Lorraine dyes the fibers and runs the shop. And she said, here are some great photos on their Facebook page, and I'll try to include those while I'm talking here. Julie says, during the tour, Lewis gave me, he explained to me the same things you mentioned. Wool is not a fiber that people react to. It is the processing and the very harsh chemicals they use to dissolve debris in the wool. He said, listen to this. He said, the chemicals are so harsh they will dissolve a stick the size of your pinky finger. What? How is that even possible? I don't know how that works, where it would dissolve a stick, but not hurt the wool. That's crazy, which kind of makes me have a whole new appreciation for Brooklyn Tweed because you do find like sticks in their yarn, <laughs> you know, like you'll find like pieces of hay in there. And I wonder if that's because they don't use the harsh chemicals. Probably that would make sense. So she said, Yampa Valley Fiber Works hand picks, well, that's why there's such a long wait, 
hand picks out each piece of hay and every stick. God bless the person who's doing that. Wow, that would be an exercise in patience. But you know, there are people out there who would probably just love to just sit there and pull stuff out of wall. I am not one of them, but I do respect you, those people out there who would enjoy that. Julie says, then they wash the sorted yarn in two pound lots in nothing but Dawn dish soap. That's it. And that would, Dawn being such a good degreaser, I imagine that's just taking out the lanolin. Their yarn is luscious and soft despite being 100% wool. She said she learned so much and she wished she lived closer, uh, but she said, needless to say, I left with a car full of yarn to knit and fiber to spin. So that is just super, super interesting. Uh, Julie and I were emailing and she said, I asked her if it was okay if I shared that. And she said, I can't exactly remember what she said, but she said something like, um, you know, I can't imagine that Adam wore that fig leaf around very long. I'm sure that Eve knit him something up pretty quickly. <laughs> Surely out of wool. <laughs> they need their own podcast, don't they? For sure. So anyway, if you feel like you are allergic to wool, probably it is either the chemicals that are used in the processing or the prickle factor because the diameter of the fiber is potentially woolen spun and that leads to just so many little ends sticking out that are digging into your skin that's bothering you. Probably you can find some wool out there that will work for you. Uh, anyway, that's how it seems to me. I would love to hear your thoughts. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Okay, knitting fantasies. Now, in honor of Chirpy and that adorable video that I showed you already, we're gonna be talking about free patterns from Rebecca Danger. Rebecca Danger is, I don't have any place to put my hands. I can't rest them on the table because it makes my camera shake. <laughs> so I'm either gonna be talking with them a lot or I'm just gonna put them on my chair. Okay, Rebecca is a lovely person. She is a genuinely good, kind, sweet person. And she's kind of fallen off the face of the earth lately and I don't know why. I need to reach out and ask her how she's doing. Um, she has a special needs son and she spends a lot of time, you know, with that, helping him and whatnot. Um, but I just love her and I love her work and she has a lot of amazing free knitting patterns. I'm gonna link her blog below but not all of the links work for the free pattern. So I'm gonna tell you how you can get that. And I will also be linking those down below. Obviously, there's the chubby chirp, which is what Chirpy was. And Chirpy is still around. After we saw that video, we went all went down to the basement and pulled out the box. And I realized how many knitted toys my oldest had. Oh my gosh, she has all the knitted toys. And the other kids, not so much. <laughs> But she really appreciates them. Like to her, they're, they're something she'll keep forever in a box in the basement. So she's that kid. Uh, and they'll stay beautiful and perfect and she'll show her kids and then she'll put them back in the box. <laughs> but Chirpy was down there along with Owlie and all the different little animals. But um, the Chubby Chirp is a free pattern from Rebecca Danger and you can get that linked on her blog. Um, bunny Nuggets, I've knit a ton of Bunny Nuggets over the years. It's basically just a little nugget with two little ears and you put a little face on it and it's adorable. They make fabulous little gifts. These things knit up super quick and you can knit them in whatever weight of yarn you want and just adjust your needle size. I have knit them in super bulky before and just made them really big on like size 15 needles. You can knit them in fingering weight yarn on like size two or three needles. So you can, you know, size them up and down depending on what you want to knit with. Now the bunny nugget link was not working on her blog, but you can get that free from Ravelry and I'll put that link down below. The monster chunks is an adorable pattern that is just plain not available anymore. This is listed on um, the free patterns on her page and for whatever reason, who knows, could be copyright, whatever, I don't know. It's not available online anymore, but a very danger Christmas is available 
and you can get this for free on the uh, Knit Picks website. Now this is so cute. It has four knitting patterns, all for free. There is an elf that's 14 inches tall, a snowman that is five inches tall, a tall monster that is nine inches, and a round monster that is five inches. All of these would make amazing Christmas ornaments or just little Christmas decorations or toys for little people or whatever you wanted to make them for. They're all really, really adorable. Um, finally, there's Magnus Ragnar, the Victorious Viking. And this is an adorable Viking pattern that she named after her friend's son, whose name is actually Magnus Ragnar, which is like, what, I mean, what kind, I mean, you can't grow up to be anything but awesome if that's your name. Like, it's just such a cool name. And so she knit th this adorable Viking and is sharing the pattern with all of us uh, for free. And it's just so cute. So if you have any Viking lovers in your family or among your friends, this is a great knitting pattern. Okay, that brings me to, so here's what happened. I have a lovely story from a podcast watcher named Lisa. She has a knitting store, a yarn store called what? Old Orcut Yarnery. And her name is Lisa. It's oldorcutyarnery.com. I will link it below. Um, but she sent me this story and it's great. It, it deals with so many topics in knitting, especially when we're talking about knitted gifts. And that's what a lot of us are doing this time of year. We're knitting gifts. And you have to determine how knitworthy a person is. And I have seen Lisa's work and she is amazing. Like, you know how when you go on Ravelry and you see everyone's projects, they run the gamut of this person didn't do a gauge swatch they use really cheap crummy yarn. They can't take a picture and it just looks terrible. And someone else knit the same pattern and it looks amazing because they blocked it properly and they did have good lighting and whatever else. But Lisa's amazing. Like her knits are really, really fabulous. So here is what Lisa has to say. She says, I am a knitter and a crocheter. Primarily I knit, but if I'm gonna make a baby blanket, I'll crochet because it's faster. Since I own a yarn store, oh my gosh, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous, I want one. Since I own a yarn store, much of my knitting time, which is whenever I'm sitting, is spent making shop samples for my store. I've got a list a mile long that needs to be made. One of my husband's cousins that we rarely see or speak to started hinting around that she wanted a blanket for a grandbaby, which I was hesitant to do because we never see or hear from them, but, I ended up setting aside all my other projects and banging it out in a couple days because my husband wanted me to. That is total knitter behavior, isn't it? Like that's what we do. It's totally like, okay, I will set this aside and do this thing for you because knitters are just the best people in the world. Sometimes, except when they're the worst, but usually they're the best. <laughs> Lisa, who's clearly the best says, when it was done, she acted funny about it when I asked where to send it. But in any case, I sent it off in the mail and got back to other projects. A couple days later, my husband comes home from work and tells me about a longtime coworker, 20 plus years, having her first grandbaby soon. I asked if I should make something and he says, well, I wasn't gonna ask after the blanket debacle. <laughs> I told him I would be glad to since they'd worked together for so long and asked if she was expecting a granddaughter or a grandson. He said granddaughter, so I picked out some yarn and got working on a cute little baby dress and a matching bonnet. I got it done in a couple days. When I was just binding off the bottom edge of the dress, my husband called me from work and said, you're gonna kill me. <laughs> I asked why. I think, I think we all know where this is going. <laughs> Turns out he got it wrong. She wasn't expecting a granddaughter, but a grandson. It was completely him. He just got it wrong. One of those little details he didn't pay attention to because he's a man, right? He said, remember that thing you always say? I told him I wasn't really feeling it right now. <laughs> 
We've been married 42 years, and when my husband does things like this, I usually tell him it's a good thing he's so cute or I'd kill him. <laughs> so I finished binding off the little dress and started on a cute little boy's vest and newsboy cap, which I finished in a couple days as well. Are these not fabulous and amazing? Oh my gosh, so, so good. So the baby was born, the gift was delivered and loved, so all is well, and I have a baby girl gift waiting for the next time I need something. She says, I'll attach pictures of the blanket and a little girl gift and the boy gift. It's a good thing I love to knit and that I love my husband. So I bet after hearing that story, you are wondering, like I was, about the cousin. Why did the cousin act funny about the blanket? So I asked Lisa, I was like, what happened there? What, what was with that? So she says, this is the answer. She emailed me again. She said, so she had hinted and hinted over Instagram messaging that she wanted to give a baby blanket to her new grandbaby. But she's the kind of family member that gets offended really easily. I think we all have members of our family that are this way. And you kind of walk on eggshells around them, right? So that's why her husband wanted her to do it, thinking this would be kind of a smoothing over kind of thing. It's not worth it to make someone upset. So then when it was done, <clears throat> I contacted her to get the address to send it to. And she just said, oh, well, you should just send it and say that it's a gift from you. So she gave me the parents' address, who don't even know who Lisa is. And she, Lisa says, I just sent it there. I never heard anything back and I don't really expect to. So you see why my husband called it a debacle. Kind of hilarious and kind of relatable like we've all done that. We've, I mean, not that exact thing, but we've all had that semi knitworthy person that we're like, not that the person's not worthy of getting the gift, but are they going to appreciate it? Are they going to take care of it? I don't know. You guys know how it is. Knitting something takes a long time, unless you're knitting an allotrope hat, because it only takes an hour just between you and me, right? No one will know. Seriously, like, I, my kids would see me starting on it. And then the next morning there'd be two hats and they're like, how, how did this happen? How did you, how did you have yarn? And now there's two hats. And I'm like, magic. But really we know it's just fat yarn and size 15 needles. But in the case of, you know, what Lisa made, it was really awesome and beautiful and amazing. So that's an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing it with us, Lisa. If you have a knitting story, please send it to me, email it to me. My email is below, but it is devin at nittymcpearly.com. If it's heartwarming or funny or delightful or cute or humiliating or relatable or whatever, I would love, love to share it on the podcast. Please send it to me. Um, my favorite is a video because then we get to see your face and we get to hear you tell it. And if I tell it, I'm just gonna interrupt a thousand times with my own thoughts. <laughs> because that's what I do, apparently. Um, but you're more than welcome to send it to me, and I am very happy to read it. And there it is, another podcast. I went a little long, but I've had people message me and be like, just ramble on, you know? And that's how I feel when people have a video. I'm like, I love to hear you talk. So that's always nice. Um, it's funny because I get the nicest emails from you guys. Like, I will get... 50 emails that are so nice. And then I'll get one that's like, you are the worst and you are a violent person talking about me. I'm a violent person. And I just can't believe that you say and do these things. And it's that one, it's that one out of 50 that sits with me. Why is that? Who knows? I don't know. But Anyway, now I'm just rambling. Thank you for joining me. This is a weekly podcast. I am here every single Sunday. So come back next week and join me at the shop update next week and sign up for the newsletter, etc. Love you guys. See you next week. Bye.